You know smartphones aren't that great. You know that, right? They're not. They're not that great. You don't need the internet in your pocket. You work at Coles, okay? You're not working for the president. <laughs> you don't need it. You don't need that much information. And also, what was the point of developing opposable thumbs for you to take a photo of your head, <laughs> post it on the internet, and then just stand by for validation? I am chatting with Randy, whose dazzling one-man show is currently playing at the Harold Clerman Theatre in New York on 42nd Street until June the 9th. And I would like to welcome you, Randy, to Theatre Talk. Thank you so much for having me. It's very exciting. Is it? Yeah, it's wonderful. I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the show. Are I, I, you? Yeah. Uh, well, tell me about your show. Uh, oh, well, this, Randy writes a novel. Yes. Uh, it's a one-man show, as you said. Well, mm -hmm. it's technique, like, it's billed as a one-man show. Yeah. But that's just mostly for equity reasons, for the union stuff. We've actually got a chorus line of maybe 30, 40 people come out in the middle. <laughs> um, so, but I can't put that on the posters, some sort of equity thing, because I'm not paying them. I got you, I got you, I got you. They just sort of come out in the middle and <laughs> dance around the background just to beef up the second act. But it's really, it's really about you, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it? it's a 130, about 100, I think it's running about 140 minutes. I see. And it's, uh, it's, it's a liturgical dance piece uh -huh, uh -huh. where I sort of explore the nature of humanity and the dynamic harmony of uh, natural phenomena that we experience on a daily basis. It sounds tiring. It's challenging, yes. <laughs> But I think, you know, the art speaks for itself. Tell me something. Um, what is your background? Where, where did this all start? Uh, I'm a, a performance-wise, you mean? Uh, or just in general? In general. Well, I grew up in Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up in a mm -hmm. small country town. I can and hear that. I can yeah. hear that. You can hear the, mm -hmm. uh, the Aussie accent? A bit, yes. It's sort of, it's, I've got a bit of a soft accent these days. When I go back to where I grew up, I'm very much, it's just like one monotone, uh -huh. blow fly kind of, kind oh, of noise. Okay. Well, you're not very doing nasal. that now, though. No, no, I'm trying to speak with my best theatre voice. I got For theatre talk. Gotcha. Okay, so but, started in Australia as a small child. Were you one of those kids that dances around the living room with absolutely. a hairbrush entertaining yep. people? Okay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. then everybody said, oh, here comes Randy. He's going to sing for us. Here he goes. He's going to yeah. sing another song. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. I, I had a huge family, big family. How um, big? Yeah, it's seven brothers, Ooh, six sisters. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so, and I'm the middle child. Oh, um, that's, a, that's a curse, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so yeah. So I left home at uh, five mm -hmm. and just sort of made my way in the world. Wasn't getting enough attention at home, so I just no. busted out and uh, went and lived on a, a sheep farm in rural New South Wales. Well, speaking of attention, I, I imagine you're quite well known in Australia. Unfortunately, yes. That's why I'm here. I'm on the I'm on the run. I was going to ask Too you well if uh, privacy was an issue with you. Well, yeah, I've been. I don't know if you follow the Australian papers, but um, no, no, I don't. Well, there's been some controversy. Anyway, let's just leave it at that. For okay. legal reasons, I can't discuss that anymore. I got but you. that's okay. why I'm here in New York. I had mm -hmm. to get out of town. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, well, I understand. Maybe we shouldn't pursue that line. No, let's leave that line of question. My lawyer should have. Did you not? Did you not talk about this? I think we cleared these that, maybe questions. Maybe that was in the rider that was attached did to your contract. Did you get my facts? I did get your facts. I didn't read it. I'm so oh, sorry. come on. My mistake. My mistake. Unbelievable. Um, let's move on. Um, <laughs> is, is it like uh, it is here with comedians? Mm. They go out on the road and they hone their craft and they play to small houses and they sleep in cheap motels. Is it yeah. like that in Australia? Very much so. Is yeah, it? Yeah. yeah, it is. That's kind of been my, at least my pathway in, in the comedy world. Sort of, I feel like I've paid my dues a little bit. Have you? Yeah, but here I haven't. I have not yet paid any dues in New York. So ah. I don't know quite, is there some sort of, you know, frat house hazing technique that you use in theatre here? Am I going to get, is there gonna, someone going to run in and paddle me halfway through a show or something? Is there something that happens? Oh, is there's there a, a lot that happens, yeah. I, I imagine there's a rich history of backstage traditions and stuff. Oh, yeah. On. But speaking of backstage uh, traditions, do you have any superstitions? A lot of us are superstitious. Oh, like theatre superstitions. Yeah. What, what are yours? What have you got? Uh, I never wear green. Amazing. I don't think it's a good thing. Is that, what Bad about luck. if you're cast in a show and the co do you get won't in there early and go, I'm not wearing green? No, I, I do. I wow. say I won't do it. I won't do it. That's amazing. Yeah, I know. What have I got? I don't really have too many superstitions. Um, I like to give myself a little pep talk about disrespecting my audience. How does that go? Well, it's usually like go out there and disrespect them. 
That's pretty much it. So because if you're disrespecting your audience, you, you have command of the stage, really, don't you? You really own it. That you way. own it. Yeah. Because if you don't care what they think, if you don't care what they think or how they're perceiving the show, generally you can stay on the track. With comedy in general, if I start to care too much about what they think or how they're receiving it, I can end up digging myself a hole trying to get them on board. But that being said, not to say that I don't work for my audience. I will work hard to try to get them on board. But generally, I don't care what they think. Not need. I care what you think, though. I, I do. Oh, well, you have my support. Already. Really? I'm your number one fan. Oh, stop it. Would you say that your uh, piece deals with creative angst? I, I was getting a lot of creative angst. Yeah, it's about the nature of um, whether or not art is only art once it's been witnessed. Oh, and what yes. do we do in terms of leaving a legacy versus pursuing some, fo some form of kind of more, I guess, esoteric enlightenment or, so, or leaving some kind of legacy behind that's either look at all this art that I made mm. or don't look at all these people that I helped. Do you know what I mean? I do. Like I the do. difference between I, yes. being selfless and entirely self-indulgent. I do. And clearly I've chosen self-indulgence. Because here we are. <laughs> here we are. In the Clerman. I don't know much about Clerman. Can you tell me anything about Clerman? Uh, he was very important in the American theatre. What did and he do? He was part of the group theatre. Oh, right. And he was a, a, a part of a small group of uh, actor, writer, producers who, um, uh, who, who were, were in the group theatre, which was a new movement, <laughs> as I said. Talk very about form, very formative kind of period. Formative. For it was very formative. Yes. In in New York specifically. In New York specifically. So the although I attended a lecture that he did at age 83. Wow. Uh, in Los Angeles. Oh. And he was leap, leaping around the stage. Oh, leaping. that's awesome. Yeah, he was inspiring. Imagine still being able to leap around the stage at 83. I'm imagining it now. Yeah. I want to be able to do that. I, I don't know if I would. <laughs> that's why I actually have a trampoline that I keep with me backstage oh, isn't behind that the smart? thing. Yeah. I know just cuz oh, cuz if the show gets boring I can just climb on it and just just sort of bounce around a bit. Oh, that's and fun. I notice you talk a lot about writers in your show. I do. Ernest Hemingway. Yes. I don't want to be a spoiler, right? If I no. mention Ernest Hemingway, I'm Please not spoiling do. anything, am I? No, not at all. Okay. Harper Lee. Yes. Not a spoiling, right? No, not at all. Um so do you have a favorite author or someone who's inspiring you? Yeah, you know what? I I read a lot of books. I'm a big Neil Gaiman fan because I like a bit of I like a bit of uh, sci-fi-ish kind of fantasy stuff. And you know what? I read a lot, but just I'm going to talk about what I just read recently. I've just okay. gone through. I've gone back and just read every book that Stephen King ever wrote, like in one sitting. Wow. Have you ever done that? No. It's uh, terrifying. No, I've, I I can barely get through one of his books. Actually, his book, I know, people don't read, I'm, I, I adore, because they're very edible for me, those books, but also just I like his every, and he takes the every man and puts them in bizarre situations. Mm -hmm. Whereas someone like Clive Barker, if we're talking horror, will take sort of unlikable people and put them in terrible situations mm -hmm. but usually you want to root for the for the Stephen King characters you know? always so always. I like that I no like matter how them. bad they are I always want to root for them yeah totally Randy uh, yes I think everyone is curious about your novel oh yes my magnificent opusness can you speak to it is that is that yeah we can talk territory? about it the book is called this is it this is it the book right here I know it's it's not just a prop it's I was the afraid actual to look. manuscript I was afraid to look no please do it's called walking to sky it's mm -hmm. about a young man who walks from the southernmost borders of Scotland up to the Isle of Skye in the far north. And, um, and it's a thrilling ride. Uh, there's a badger in the third act that speaks to him mm -hmm. about um, his future. And between the start and the middle and the end of that, it's just, look, you know what? I'm going to crack this wide open. I don't know if it's any good. I can't tell. I think it might be a bit Really? Yeah, I don't know. Well, there's only one way to find out, right? Well, Which yes, to do two months about, of right? shows at the Clerman and read bits out. Right, and see exactly, what people think. exactly. And then talk to people after. So that's hopefully, that's the whole point of this. This is not even, this is a thinly veiled book reading. That's I all this show is. So, I thought yep. so. Yep. I really did, I thought so. Yeah. Well, is there anything you'd like people to know about you that they might not know? Um... That's a, yeah, that is an interesting question because I'm a very private person. I know, yeah, So I know if people don't about. know anything about me, I prefer that. Which is counterintuitive to someone who's trying to make it. In showbiz. As a performer, yeah. yeah. I think this might be my last ever show. Really? Yeah, I think this is it for me. This is your farewell tour? I think so. And, well, I, and, and now that I've been done theatre talk, you know what I mean? Like I've, you've kind of done it all. I've kind of done it all. Yeah. I have. I don't think there's much more for me to achieve.
I know this season I'll do this season, mm -hmm. but at the end of this season, I think I'm out. Well, I am very impressed with your credits that I, someone gave me. Uh, you have been nominated for Best Comedy at the Edinburgh F F Fringe Festival. Yes, with this show. With this show. With this, this one. Show? Randy writes a novel. Yep. Okay, this is a long list. You want me to read them all? Uh, it's up to you. I'm sure they'll edit it out later, yeah. but right. yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay, well, it ends with nominee Golden Globe Award, Melbourne Comedy Festival 2009. Now, that's a typo. It's not a Golden Globe Award. It's a Golden Gibbo Award. No, I just misread it. Oh, right. It a typo. That's, that's the sorry. best. I would love it if I got credit for a Golden Globe nomination. Let, why don't we it's say a Golden, Golden Gibbo. Globe? Can Golden... we say Golden Globe? No, well, no the Golden can't. Gibbo is named after an amazing um, Australian performer by the name of Linda Gibson. She was an incredibly prolific, wonderful, wonderful comedian, and uh, and she had an award named after her posthumously. It, it, it basically it awards shows, <clears throat> excuse me, that are a little bit um, usually self-produced, always yeah. in fact uh -huh. self-produced, and uh, shows that are a little bit anarchic or off the grid a little bit. Speaking so, of, I, 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 speak I to me. just Talk to me. Talk toot to me. our own horn a little bit because oh, we yeah. have had some other Australians on the show. Oh. Maybe you know some of them. I know all of them, surely. Do it's you? a very small country. It is. It looks big on the map. It's not. No, it's not. Um, it's Hugh Jackman. Have you heard of Hugh Jackman? I'm a big fan of Jackman. Is Huey he? and I, yes, I know Hugh. We actually go fishing together occasionally, me and Hugh. Really? He's got yes. He's got a yacht. This you, this is actually true. He's got a, a very large. He it's like almost like a catamaran style boat. Doesn't surprise me. No, no. and we go off the coast of. Uh, it's actually quite close to Sydney. There's a small little bay uh -huh. out, just outside of Sydney, and we go out. We go out fishing together. Uh, Dame Edna, we had on the show. Oh, Do you know Dame Edna? I wish. I wish I could say that I knew Dame Edna, but da Dane. Oh, can I say that again? Because I just called her Dame Edma, which is very embarrassing. Please, if you're watching Dame Edna, I apologise. We're talking about Dame Edna. I don't know Dame Edna, but I wish I did. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I used to walk past her house often and sort of just slow down on the off chance that she would come out did and say, you? hello, possum, but she never did. Oh, that's good. So my last name that I'm going to drop. Okay, dropping some names. Here we go. Kate Blanchett. Oh, Katie! Whoa. Yeah, me and Katie, great mates. Like this, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. In fact, I have a show in development with her at the Sydney Theatre Company. I don't know if you know she's the artistic director. No, she director. spoke of that with us, yeah. Right, yes, I'd yes. I'd love to see something there. It sounds so good. Well, her and I are developing a two-hander, actually. She's going to really? be in it, yes, with me. I'm oh. very excited about that. 2020, that'll come out. Fantastic. Yep. It's called um, uh, Kate uh, Humiliates Randy with Her Acting Prowess. That's a working title. I well, made that up. She, Randy, the, the I'm sorry title. that we are out of time. No, I just come on, man. We've only day. scratched the surface. I uh, want to know about you. I know. Let's talk about you we and your get, things. Uh, no, no, no. It's not about me. It's all about you. Oh. It's all about Randy, folks. Randy is at the Harold Clerman Theater until June the 9th in his screamingly funny one-man show, Randy Writes a Novel. With chorus line. And with a, a chorus line But don't well. tell equity. <laughs> Our thanks to the Friends of Theatre Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theatre Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Lowe Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, the Noel Coward Foundation, Carrie J. Freeze, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, and the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. We welcome your questions or comments for Theatre Talk. Thank you.